It's time for the Legends Update here on the 757 at 6 on this July evening. We thank you for spending the time with us. Matt Hatfield here with you and bringing us the Legends Update as we've been doing all month long. Our good friend from Sports Inside and Out, the Legends of Sports. Check out the Facebook page, sportsinsideandout.com, and all the podcasts with him and Wally Jones and their crew. Our good pal, Coach Charles Hatcher, the Norview living legend with us here. And Coach Hatcher, we got a great one. Virginia Ties, oh, Danville man. native, Richmond resident. This will be fun. Not only that, he's a great personality and probably one of the more great business minds within great legends. They put two guys, I could really say this, really parlayed themselves into something that me and Wally are really, really tremendously proud of. And, and he exemplifies what a uh, professional on and off the court can do. For the years of a stupid businessman, but flavor by Steph's son Gerald and put the Knicks. And came across because we always knew what it was up in Danville and what he meant to the University of Richmond State of Virginia. But I got real close to him through Gerald, my stepson that played with him. He had such a stellar career. I mean, I can tell you a whole lot of great things about his 16 year career, all the stuff that he's done. But anytime you get within New York with the Knicks, with the legacies of Barnett and Clyde and Brad and, and Reed and all the other great. And this guy comes out to be one of the most likable and most influential guy of the New York Nick Legends. That speaks within itself. Guys like producers, Central City Productions, you know, they say, well, you know, you know Johnny. I said, well, I know the young buck. He said, man, this guy's this letter. I mean, it, it makes me feel good. When I look at Johnny, I see, oh, he's just a baby. He's a <laughs> man, but uh, he is a fantastic guy, represents Virginia. Tremendous of well all, all over the country and the world. He's also a tremendous uh, facilitator for the legend. So you can't ask for a better guy. Larry Ten, uh, all of, I mean, he goes about saying, Matt, I know you're going to put it there, but this is something that I do really, really know that the, the legacy of Virginia is in very good hands when you start talking about one of the great ones. Plus, he's one of the shoppers. Matt, you've never seen a guy dress like this. He is <laughs> off the chain. <laughs> I don't know. I, he makes me mad sometimes. I don't know. <laughs> well, Coach, it's, it's, in the, it's, it's in the closet. I can't go anywhere right now, so I can't uh, well, go in yeah. there and take a look at it. You know? well, thank you. I'll put it back. I know you did it like a chest cat. Uh, Mrs. Newman, keep his butt right there in Richmond for a minute. <laughs> uh, give us all a break, so we won't have to put the FBI out there to find out where these clothes are coming from. So, <laughs> but uh, he's a great guy, and I think you'll enjoy talking to him, Matt. He's truly one of the special ones, and Todd Warner will be able to us. We call him Johnny. Other people call him Newman. Johnny, thanks for that's a fantastic cat. We're going to do a lot of great things, but keep it in mind, John, we got to call you. We got to get some more cats ready for Matt. Now. Okay. Okay, great. We appreciate it, guys. Let's talk with uh, Johnny Newman, the former 16-year NBA veteran, Virginia Sports Hall of Famer, Danville native, Richmond resident, all-time leading scorer for the Spiders, where his jersey number 20 is retired at U of R, 2,383 points there. And uh, we'll get into his fashion style and sense too, maybe. But, uh, Johnny, thanks for coming on the program with us. Uh, how's life treating you during this wild summer of 2020? I tell you, it, it, you know, it's very tough times for a lot of people and just – for our whole country with the pandemic, but I tell you, I have really been busy, busy doing some, a couple of my businesses, and you know, they've been doing very well, and I've been helping people to kind of stay afloat and stay employed, and just been really not able to travel, but been having a, a great time as far as business and some of the projects that have been working on even before the pandemic hit us. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't want to be mistaken here, but we had on recently an NFL player who's involved with it too, and Jalen Holmes from Lake Taylor High School, Norbert. I think you're in the trucking business too, are you not? I am. Okay. I am. Very much so, yes. So that's going pretty well for you? I, um, I, it's going great. I do the line haul, which is the tractor trailers with FedEx Ground, and I also own about 25 Prime, Amazon Prime vans that deliver to your, your doorstep every day. So uh, those two businesses have really, really been booming along with some very, very wise real estate decisions I made in the Richmond area when I purchased about 25 homes. And at that point, they were some of them were, were not even livable, but I, I ordered them up, paid the taxes on them in the city of Richmond, especially in the north side and, and also in the Church Hill part of Richmond. 
that I mean, people are coming from everywhere there in the in the market for uh, fellas is just fantastic. Well, good deal. Well, well, good to hear about that because uh, I've been getting a lot of Amazon Prime things at my house. But tell me, let's talk about some basketball here to start things going here, uh, Johnny. I mean, you grew up there, Danville, Virginia. Tell the folks here in the 757 not real familiar about Danville, just how passionate the fans are out there about their sports, particularly basketball, and how that helped shape and mold you. Well, you know, I went to GW, you know, the GW Eagles, throwing history in sports, you know, football, basketball, track and field. It was a time that I came through where it was so many great players, but for one reason or another, none of them really could go to that next level and, you know, really go to the next level even after that. So I would always see all these guys. I would play against them. I would read about them. People would tell me about them. And I just wanted to be one of those that I wanted to do it. I, I was one of the hardest working guys, you know, along with having a sweet jump shot and being able to jump out the gym. Don't you say anything about that coach, but uh, all right, uh, about the gym, but you know, it was it was it drove me to try to be the best I could be, and I wanted to be the best that, that come out there, and you know, I think I did a good job of uh, trying to accomplish that. Oh, yeah, Danville taking pride. They won a state basketball championship under Coach Jermaine Parker just this past year in 2019 of one of their own, and Kenneth Harris leading Green Run High School uh, to a state championship as the coach. He's a proud Danville Eagle, one of their state championship teams there in the 1990s. Right. Uh, Johnny, tell me about, too, um, as you get to college, University of Richmond. And, by the way, for those that don't know, the Spiders hold the distinction of being the only basketball program to win an NCAA tournament game as a 12, 13, 14, and 15 seed. I'm sure our pal Coach Hatcher knew about that. But, Johnny, what did that win over Charles Barkley and Auburn do for you and your basketball career moving forward? Uh, it was just, uh, you know, it had, so, it had a major impact on it. The institution had never been to – the NCAAs, and we would always talk about it. And when they recruited me, that was something that we talked about. And uh, we made it happen. It was great. I mean, you know, Charles is still one of my good friends. And we, we just had the utmost respect for one another. You know, but his career was his outstanding career at Auburn. And for us, as loaded as that team was, had an opportunity to win that game. It just propelled not only my career, but – just the whole program of the University of Richmond Fathers. He's very modest, Coach Hatcher, because to beat the round mound of rebound and that Auburn team, you had to be pretty special, and Johnny Newman was. He, he's always been the same thing. You know, don't get too full. That humility only goes as far as, as to come in while they start contending each other on who can shoot the best. So, you know, that, that humility goes out there. I'll do what it is, but up until that point, he's good. But Barco used to talk a great deal about him. In the year they – Actually, really, Barkley came out there that uh, cut his, his college career a year or so short. But when New came in, he was really, truly one of the most steadfast journeymen with a job in the league because there wasn't no ever a season where New was not going to have a, a top six job. He was that sort of that He was such a team consummate, extremely intelligent man, and able to do a little thing with his little quiet, unassuming personality which tricks everybody. <laughs> but he, he Don't tell my secret coach, don't tell us uh he, he is something to, to be admired of and of all the the players that we had uh, Matt with the National Basketball Retired Players Association family, him becoming the apex of chairman of the board was something me and, and Wally were super proud of and he was more than deserving. And then, of course, his accolades from there being one of the top businessmen in NBA history for legends has really been something we've been proud of. He, he's very, very uh, well respected from the top to the bottom, from Sam Jones to Bill Russell. Everybody really understands. Our dear friends, Julius and George Gerber, they know that Johnny's something to be respected. He, He's always there for you to be a part of anything that's positive, not just for himself, but for Virginia. That's that's the thing that we're so happy about, Matt. We're talking with the former NBA veteran and CAA player there with Richmond Spiders back in 1984, a GW Eagle at heart, Johnny Newman, along with our pal, Coach Charles Hatch, the Norview Living Legend Sports Inside and Out here on our Legends Update on the 757 at 6 on ESPN Radio. 
94.1. Johnny getting drafted there by the Cleveland Cavaliers, second round, 1986 draft. And the Cavs had some budding stars there, Mark Price, Brad Doherty, Ron Harper. You jump into that situation. How was the transition for you from the college game to the pro ranks? I tell you, I had, you know, uh, coming under, uh, first thing, I have to give kudos to uh, my dear friend Wayne Emery, who, who drafted mm-hmm. me. And, you know, yep. uh, Coach Lenny Wilkins, Brian Winters was there, the shot doctor. So for me uh, to come in and at that year also, Hot Rod, John Hot Rod Williams, you know, rest in peace with Hot Rod, but John Hot Rod Williams had set out. So that year we had a starting five right there because that next year he was able to play our rookie year. But, but you said it, Brad Doherty, Ron Hopper, Mark Price, Hot Rod, and myself, that was a five any day of the week. But it was exciting. I learned a lot. I learned so much. Uh, I, I wish it would have worked out. But we had so many people back then on that roster. And, you know, Rick Pitino had recruited me uh, all my years of high school. I knew him well. He knew exactly what I could do, which was shoot the jumper and run up and down. And uh, he got me over to New York. So uh, that, was, that was definitely great for me. But the learning that I had at Cleveland uh, when I got drafted was just, you know, volumes. And uh, definitely, you know, I have to give kudos out to all the coaching staff and, and that, uh, that whole ownership, which Mr. Gordon Gunn was just wonderful. And uh, very instrumental in the Knicks winning the division. You were, Johnny, averaging 16 points per game. even had a 35-point game for the Knicks during that uh, 87 run to the playoffs. And, um, you know, to have the career you did, I mean, 16 years, career averages 11 points per game. And people look at you, go to different teams, well, that's not a good thing. It's a a positive because you're wanted. Four seasons with the Hornets, three with the Knicks, three in Milwaukee, three with the Nets, a couple in Cleveland, Dallas, Denver. What was your most enjoyable Stay and memorable stay. Who was it with? Kind of take me through that if you can. Well, definitely, it was with the Knicks. We were, I think at that time, Rick and the administration was going back and forth because we had a successful team. We had a very successful team. And we were we were running things in the city, and we were getting better and better each year. And we definitely gave the Celtics and the Bulls at that time and Detroit. We were very competitive. We just needed to stay together. But as you know, in New York, patience is nowhere to be found most of the time. And they broke us up. We had to be broken up. So some of that, you know, me leaving was not all on me, along with some other guys. But I tell you, when we were there, we were a great team. We were competitive. And every night back then, every night was not a cakewalk. You didn't have an easy matchup. You didn't have an easy game back in the day. I'm sorry to say I love all my young players, but I'm telling you, back in the day, you call, you know what, every night, especially at the small forward, big arm. Oh, yeah. I played. You know, it was just, you know, for the first 10 years, you didn't get a break. Sure. And, you know, that set the tone for that run to the finals they later had on with Pat Riley and Ewing leading the way there in 94 when they fell short against the Houston Rockets in game seven. But I want to go to 92-93, the Hornets. You had Alonzo Mourning, that buzzer beater in the first round against the Celtics. So much Virginia flavor during your time with the Hornets there from 90-93. You had yourself, J.R. Reed, who played at Kempsville High in Virginia Beach, Del Curry, Virginia Tech, Kenny Gaddison, Old Dominion. We know Tony Bennett, who's now the head coach at UVA, even Dave Twardzik, the OD you great as an executive plus you had guys like Muggsy and LJ I mean I thought they might call you guys the Commonwealth Hornets yeah I tell you we had a lot of VA flavors you know Alan Bristol was the GM he brought me in I never forget uh my dear friend uh, Peter Vesey told me that hey July 1st you're gonna become a free agent and you're gonna get 10 phone calls and he was right one of them was there it was close to my home being from Danville it was closer for my mom and dad to get there, so it just made sense because, like I said, things were, were rumbling into the big city. We came there, you know, Zoe came down, LJ, you know, Bugsy and Dale were already there, and Kenny Gaddison, JR, and the guys. We had a, a wonderful team. We were competitive, but young, but young. But we did some damage there, and we got that franchise started, and I tell you, the high would be rocking all the time. It would be rocking every night. 
A few minutes here with the NBA veteran Johnny Newman, Virginia Sports Hall of Famer, all-time leading scorer in the University of Richmond out of George Washington High School in Danville, and our pal Coach Charles Hatch of the Norview Living Legend, Sports Inside and Out, part of our Legends Update here on the 757 at 6 on ESPN Radio 94.1. For more of your Legends, sportsinsideandout.com. Coach Hatcher and Wally Jones and the crew will get you connected with that, and I'm sure Coach Hatcher will have some fun with this one with you too, Johnny. I'm wondering if it was him or Rick Pitino, or some other NBA person. Somebody had to get this set up. But a lot of people don't know that Johnny Newman was in a movie, Actor in the Shadow Conspiracy with Charlie Sheen, Linda Hamilton, yeah. Donald Sutherland, <laughs> Sam Waterston, Jack McCoy from Law & Order fame, that is. How would you like being on the big screen? I tell you, I love it. But I, was, I have double respect for those actors because it's not easy. It's work. It's really work. And we all see the finished product. But it was work. But uh, a good friend of mine was close with Charlie, and I'm an NBA player. I'm living a life. I'm having fun. And he hits me up with, Johnny, we coming through town. Charlie wants to play basketball. He wants you to hook it up. So I thought, oh, no problem. I got a gym. We go. So we go to the gym, and I make him look good. I make Charlie look good because, you know, basketball definitely is not. And he can't but, uh, right. He likes to get out there, and he loves to play. And I made him look good. And after the game, he said, Johnny, I want you to be in this movie. You know, I thought, I was like, come on. Look, you got some paper. I got some paper. You ain't got to pull my leg. And I thought he was just messing with me. And uh, about two weeks after they left, I got a phone call. I said, you know, they set it all up. I got my card. So I got my action steel card and went on up to Baltimore for a couple of weeks, shot the movie, and the rest is history. That's great. And your career as a player, what are you most proud of? I'm most proud of the respect that I am able to have from my former peers and coming from Danville, Baltimore City, travel the world and just meet, you know, I mean, I grew up, you know, idolizing Dr. J, George Iceman, Gervin, sitting on the ice. And for me to be able to call them, on my cell phone, and they have the utmost respect and a glad to for me. I'm like a kid in a you know, cookie factory because who would ever have thought that that would happen to me? Sure. Um, get you on these last two here. Where, where do you think we are right now in the state of, because I know you follow Richmond very near and dear to your heart and everything going on in the Commonwealth with college sports. Where do you think we are with the state of college sports and also the NBA right now as they get restarted here? Give me Johnny Newman's take and perspective on it. I'm just really hoping and praying every day. I, I just know the passion and feelings and all of the fun that I had playing, you know, high school ball and college ball. I'm definitely hoping and praying every day that everything's okay and that these athletes have the same opportunities and experiences that I had as an athlete and a player that I experienced and have all that fun and that competitiveness to be able to come out. I'm hoping that they'll be able to sustain and be able to play it and everybody continues to be safe and play the game that we love so much. And uh, and that the Spiders win some games. You know, <laughs> and hopefully we're able to, you know, go back and compete again in the NCAA very soon. I tell you what, Coach Hatch, they got some good pieces back and all these nickname changes in sports, the Spiders, that's as good as it comes, isn't it? Well, there's no question about it. You know, he, he made it uh, an a impactful point for the City of Richmond, Virginia, helped put it on the map, and the Atlantic 10 didn't do too bad for him as well. So it was so great to be able to have him there, be a part of his life, not just with him playing with my son, son Gerald, who I uh, used to really, really zero in on because he helped stabilize Gerald a great deal. I hate to say that, but that's basically what that is. But his talent and his friendship and his legacy to my family and to Wally and my fiance and program director Max that's a part of this situation. It just goes to show you the impact of the type of personality, not just comes from Virginia, but the type of personalities that are involved in our organization, as well as what he's doing because he's intricately involved. He, again, being very modest, he has a fantastic program in Richmond that's spreading out nationally, and he should give that a pitch before he gets off because his program with with fathers and their children as well as mothers is one of the best programs on the East Coast as well. So, but uh, I love him to death, man. I, you know, it's not too many times I don't call him. 
and he always makes sure that me and Wally are updated on what's going on. And, you know, he is one that I would take and be a part of anything. If Johnny Newman calls you or anyone says, I don't like Johnny Newman, the best thing to do is run. <laughs> Something's wrong with him. So <laughs> he's a great cat. I ain't going to best with him to get his head picked those sorts. I just want him to send me a couple of suits. So, <laughs> man, uh, yeah. Look sharp, too. Get, get on the but dance I, floor. I want to be like. I want to be like Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Johnny. That's right. Well, we'll let you go. I could talk with you guys all day and really appreciate it. Uh, he can maybe give us a little fashion style since here before we go, too. But I, he was part of the Greater Richmond Pro-Am Summer League founder and player. And sort of to piggyback on what Coach Hatcher said there, Johnny, uh, what's next for you? Give us what else you're doing here. And uh, what's next for you here in these coming months and uh, time? Well, I definitely, you know, Coach, uh, and I thank you for those kind words. I am very proud of my father and son program that I have. And, you know, we are uh, seen towards, you know, a uh, single family, a single father, single mother, parents, and we get them out because sometimes communicating with them is so tough. So we get them out to, to participate and go through a one-day or two-day camp with their parents, with their uncle, with their grandfather, with their brother, and it really uh, shows each, each one of them what they can do and what they can't do. So it makes those lines of communication. We have a lot of fun. We have an obstacle course that we go through. And we have a lot of fun with that. And I'm very, uh, you know, proud of it. And I'm very looking forward to when everything clears up, we can, uh, you know, put our ninth, ninth year on. All right. It's great to hear. Johnny Newman, the NBA veteran, Virginia Sports Hall of Famer, Danville native, and Richmond's all-time leading scorer with us here on the Legends Update, presented by our friend Coach Charles Hatch, the Norview Living Legend Sports Inside and Out. A real pleasure talking with both of you guys. Stay safe and well, and we'll touch base sure. down the road. All right. Thank you. Good job. You all take all care. Right. See you on Fifth Avenue, baby. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs>